This is Debunk TV. What is truth? They are two different Absolutely. claims. So, like, truth is basically subjective. This is a worldview thing. No fossilized eyeballs, trust me. This is Debunk TV. Welcome to Debunk TV. If you are joining us for the first time, we're about to tackle human evolution. Do us a favor, back up a couple episodes, look at the one where we're talking about critical thinking when it comes to this subject, and then look at the one that we did when on fossils, and we did a whole debunked video called Fossils Prove Evolution, and we debunked that. This is kind of part two of that, but it's a little separate because it's human evolution. We're gonna get into the debunked video, but Carl, you got something to tell the folks right now. How do they reach out, what do they do? I tell you what you should do, man. If you want to get these debunk videos and debunk TV free of charge, all you need to do is text the message "adios DTV" all right to five one five five five. And when you do that on your smart device, you're going to get something back that you just fill it out, send it in. You get a link to all the debunk TVs, all the debunk videos, and then when we release the future debunks, bub, they even get them, get them before, before we release yeah. them to the general public. And remember, all this stuff, the, the, the debunk videos, the debunk TV, a lot of our other content. Totally free. Getdebunked.com. Go there, click on it, you'll see one just like this. This is Fossils Prove Evolution. Really? Let's play it. Then we're going to talk about it. We've unearthed millions of fossils around the world, so with all this evidence, so to speak, it's clear that the fossil record proves evolution, right? Well, actually, no. Didn't when Darwin was alive, and hasn't since he's been gone. In fact, Chucky e. D himself knew this when he wrote the following. Geology assuredly does not reveal any such finely graduated organic chain. And this, perhaps, is the most obvious and gravest objection which can be urged against my theory. The explanation lies, as I believe, in the extreme imperfection of the geological record. Okay, but surely after all the time since Darwin, digging and discovering fossil after fossil, we have a more perfect geological record that supports evolution, right? Not even close, bud. Listen to how two renowned evolutionary biologists summarize the truth. Instead of finding the slow, smooth, and progressive changes, they saw in the fossil record rapid bursts of change, new species appearing seemingly out of nowhere and then remaining unchanged for millions of years, patterns hauntingly reminiscent of creation. The fossil record doesn't show gradual change, and every paleontologist has known that ever since Cuvier, or however you pronounce that. Okay, I could go on and on, but there's always going to be opposing views because on both sides of the debate, the same evidence is interpreted through different worldviews. You gotta remember that, people. Facts don't say anything. People say things based on their interpretation of facts influenced by their worldview. But that's a whole other subject, and I don't want to get into it right now. Instead, hey, let's have a little fun and take a look at some popular secular articles and charts on the fossil record and see if we can learn to separate facts from interpretation of facts by asking a few simple questions. Question one, did the artiste take any artistic license with what I'm looking at here? Check this out because this happens all the time. Look, isn't that sweet? So cute and fluffy. Okay, why do you think the artist made these creatures appear more human-like by throwing in an affectionate smile and depicting them hanging out like a human family going to a picnic or something? Why did he draw them walking upright? Why make the shapes and colors of their eyes more human than ape? Is any of it based on actual fossil evidence? Of course not. But if you want the story of evolution to appear more convincing, you just might fill in missing gaps with your presuppositional imagination. Just saying. <laughs> Question two, is the attention-grabbing headline or title supported by actual facts? For instance, take a look at this popular book called Why Evolution is True. We don't even have to go any further than the jacket on this one because on it you got a dino evolving into a bird in three simple steps. There you go. But then on the inside, this is written, and I kid you not. The jacket depicts a chronological sequence of fossils showing the evolution of birds. We do not know whether the actual line of descent included, now wait for it, the first three. Say what now? Doesn't that mean these three shouldn't be on the cover then? Which means all you got is a modern bird, right? No evolution, just a bird. Talk about worldview filling in gaps. On to question three. What do the graphics on evolutionary charts indicate? I mean, they sure do look convincing. For instance, on this one from the dinosaur book, you got solid red columns and white columns showing gradual progression over time. But let's read the almost imperceptible two-point font over here. It reads, tinted areas indicate solid fossil evidence, which means the white areas represent no solid fossil evidence, right? Okay, then take them away. Uh-oh, looks like patterns hauntingly reminiscent of creation, I'd say, right from their own charts. And the same thing goes for the dotted lines on this one. Look at all of them. 
Just so we're clear, dotted lines indicate zero evidence. Remove them and what do you get? No transitional forms or evidence of gradual progression. A bat is a bat, a kangaroo is a kangaroo, and a horse is a horse. Of course, of course, unless of course the horse is Mr. Ed. Look, people, all I'm saying here is if you got facts, put them in there. If you don't, leave them out. But don't draw downright dubious daft, dare I declare, dunderheaded dotted lines of deliberate deception dogmatically and dastardly doodle to disguise definitive data? No. Just admit what you actually see, overwhelming evidence of living things, according to their kinds, suddenly appearing, which, as a reminder, is exactly what the Bible teaches. Now, I don't even have time to get into TV, movies, and documentaries. All I ask is that you use the same line of questioning when you watch them. And in summary, we agree with Mr. D. Geology surely does not reveal any such finely graduated organic chain. Not then, not now, not ever. And that means the whole idea that the fossil record proves evolution has been debunked. Adios. There it is. I like that one. Play that. Keep playing that one. All I know. It's a good one. I love these. Playing these. Okay, so uh, get us started. We're we're gonna get into this, and we got we're gonna have twenty couple twenty minutes or so. We gotta run, gonna, bro, because yeah. this one is like I, this is like a lightning round yeah. of all <laughs> our evolutionary yeah. ancestors. Yeah. But let's at the very beginning. Let's be honest. There's two ways that we got everybody that we see everything that we see all yeah. the people, right? Yeah. Number one. In the beginning, God. And God said in Genesis 1, that we are created in his image. Yeah. By the way, you want value, you want worth, there it is. Nothing on this planet, I don't care how good looking you are, no. I don't care how rich you are, how smart you are, nothing can give you more value than the one right here that and says I think that's, that's that you're why, created yeah, in we're his We're created in his image. And I think that's why we tackle this stuff. It's so Absolutely. important. We don't still want to tell you there's you know, there's a breakdown in the fossils or, hey, what you're seeing, is your, it's tricks, but... It's so important that you know this because there's, like Carl said, two ways to look at it. You're either made in the image of God and God exists, which gives you meaning and purpose and life and love and relationship, or, he's, or he doesn't, and we're an accident. There's no meaning. There's exactly. no purpose. So this is big stuff, but we're going to kick it off to Juan yes. because he's going to go a little deeper into what it means to be made in the image of God. Yes. Check this out. What does it mean to be made in the image of God? Being created in the image of God has both structural and functional dimensions. Structurally speaking, the image of God is part of our structure, our essence. We reflect God. It's who we are. This distinguishes us from the animal kingdom and gives us ontological worth. This dimension is permanent. We also reflect the image of God structurally in that we are free and rational beings capable of creating, planning, reasoning. And finally, we're triune body, soul, and spirit, and our soul is eternal. Now, functionally speaking, the image of God is about what we do as humans. We represent and reflect God. It's what we were created to do. This also sets us apart from the animal kingdom. We have functional value. Although this dimension has been damaged by sin and God is in the process of restoring it, functionally, we reflect the image of God in that we govern, we are relational, we are moral beings with a conscience, knowing right and wrong, a law that is written in our hearts. An amazing application of what it means to be an image bearer came from Jesus himself. When he was confronted by the Pharisees about paying taxes, he responds with the famous words, give unto Caesar what is Caesar's and unto God what is God's. Jesus was saying, give your money to Caesar. It has his image on it, and thus it belongs to him. But give yourselves to God. You bear his image, and thus you belong to him. Thank you, Brother Juan. Dr. Valdez, as we yes, call him around is. here. Well, he is a doctor. Know. You know, we call him Juan because he's a good yeah, friend, and yeah. he's not He's not. I always forget to call him doc, but Dr. Is. Valdez. Yeah. Dr. Juan. All right, man, let's jump into this. This, yes. is, this is legit stuff. You're gonna, this is your specialty. The so lightning round. This is the lightning round. <laughs> it's what we left him with last time, right? But what we want to do is we don't want to come to this. We want to go to the core, go to the root, because yeah. what do we say? Don't look at images, go down deeper. This is actually nothing more than a continuation of a, uh, an image that goes all the way back to when I was a child. Yeah, yeah. Life, nature, uh, I'm sorry, it's, yeah, it's Life, yeah. Nature, Library. Sorry about that. I had the whole set. My parents bought the whole set for me, and it's so crazy. Just a couple of years. This yep. is the truth. Yep. I was looking through my library, and I still had this one still book. Have it. <laughs> I opened it up, and this is the chart that's on the inside of this Life Nature Library book. Yep. It's 
The original. This is the original. That's the one that did everybody in. Yeah. It? Yeah. I remember this, that one on my on my school. It, uh, yeah. More yeah, schools yeah, yeah. bought this. This they, they sold more of these posters than they did the book really? because the schools <laughs> bought them, put them oh, all over the place. Oh, they and then they yeah. because I remember these everywhere. They and I went to a uh, you know quote unquote Christian school. Uh, and I went to the secular yeah, yeah. school, and we had the same yeah. chart. So this is the original March of Progress. But what the I March never did. Progress. What I never did is I never did what we're telling you to do now is not just look at pictures, but to dig deeper. So let's break into this. Bing, 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 go for it. Important stuff to look at, the pictures and also the words. The text. Okay, here we go. And remember, I tell people always, you want to get three sources. We're just doing one or two yep. here. You can do this on your own. First one is Pliopithecus. What is said about Pliopithecus? Well, long considered to be ancestral gibbons, the Pliopithecids are now known to be far removed from gibbons or indeed any other living primate. So if they're far removed from living primates, that means... Uh, they're not in the human lineage, right? They're not in right? the human lineage. And, and back, back up a little bit, just, just so we get clear. That, that march of progress right. is saying what? That we, we descended from ape-like creatures? Is right. That, Here's the thing. Okay. Uh, evolution no longer teaches that uh, apes evolved into humans. It now teaches that there was an ape-like ancestor that had both ape and human characteristics, and then slowly, gradually, over time, they had mutations, and some became right. gradually more ape, and some became gradually more human. And so this right. is supposedly depicting how that ape-like ancestor became us. Became us. Okay. March okay. Of progress. Okay. The march of progress. So. But Pliopithecus doesn't belong there, according uh, to their own okay. writing. Okay. First one gone. gone. Doesn't belong in that in that chart that we just saw. No. Nope. What about the next one? Proconsul. What do they have to say about this? Well, we read that it's considered to be a very early ape, the ancestor of the chimpanzee and perhaps of the gorilla. If it's an ancestor to the ape lineage, the chimpanzee lineage, is it an ancestor it to the human lineage? Apparently, it shouldn't be on that chart either. It should not be in a chart showing <laughs> right. that we evolved. Okay, right. Simple stuff. Dryopithecus. Okay, this one is, I love this one, quite frankly. Uh, David Begun of the University of Toronto in Canada reanalyzed, uh, reanalyzed. reanalyzed thank you, yep. fossils of dryopithecus apes, which lived in what is now Europe as early as about 12.5 million years ago. He says that the characteristics of the skull suggest that rather than evolving earlier than the great apes, as was previously thought, dryopithecus was actually a great ape itself. So he goes on ape, too. Yeah, it's, it's an ape. Not Again, he's not in it. Okay, so and it says, "What if Dryopithecus, that looks like a little gorilla, <laughs> really was a little gorilla that had already branched off from humans?" I agree with the guy, man. Yeah. If, it, if it's a gorilla, it's a gorilla. Isn't that the point? It's, it goes back to the whole thing. It's a, you, you may want a peach, but it's it's an apple or an exactly. orange. You may, you may want to form all these things, put all these things together. But when you look at it, it really is always usually what it is. Exactly. Right? And that's the point again. This one doesn't belong on the chart. Doesn't belong on the chart. Uh, Oreopithecus. It's not the cookie monster. No. Oh, great. It's a different one, all right? Uh, likely side branch on man's family tree. This is right under the text and that th and thing, and, and you're going to see a couple of these, right, the different ones. Some yeah. is from the chart, and then some is right yeah. from other sources, but when we do the arrow, it's right under. Right. The, <laughs> the so thing. if it's a side branch, humans yeah. are here, that means it's over here, which means it's not in the lineage. It goes on. Was clearly an aberrant ape. So that's not in the human lineage. And then another source, Oreopithecus fossils are poorly preserved and some of the bones are crushed, making it difficult to draw definitive <laughs> conclusions. And is that not true with every one of these? Every one, every one, of, one of these could these, say right? that exact yeah. same thing. Yeah. Well, not that they're all crushed because there is one right, that they right, have. Right, right, not crushed, but there, it's really difficult to draw definitive conclusions from the things that they found. And we're going to explore that a little Absolutely. further as we go. But we got we got more. We can just, we go. We can just keep going. All right. Ram, uh, Ramapithecus. Yep, here we go. Ramapithecus was thought to be a distinct genus that was the first direct ancestor of modern humans, Homo sapiens, before it became regarded as that of the orangutan ancestor Civipithecus. So, orangutan, not, not human, human lineage. lineage. What but it was doing thought before. Chart? Again, some of these words suggest thought before. All these things are still always, worth looking at. But, always looking. But again, for that. doesn't belong in the chart. Not in the lineage. What is going on? All right, Australopithecus afarensis. Oh, I'm sorry, no, Afri Africanus. We're going to get to uh, afarensis. Africanus possessed brains the size of apes had ape-like skulls, and was similar in body shape and size. I wonder what it could be. I'm guessing since it said ape three times in here, it's, it's prob probably an ape. Maybe it's in the ape it, lineage. Th this, is, this is what, okay, so we're going to go back to kind of what we talked about a couple times. It, if you find fragments of things right. and you want them to be ancestors, you start building things up. And we're going to see later how, the, how they even uh, develop the pictures. But, but we got to be careful. Uh, when, every time we see anything, 
to investigate, look at the text, look at the image. Did we did we really did we find this? No. Did we find this like no. hey guy and he came out of the water? Nope. It's not what he was like. He nope. wasn't the right. And we'll come back to that point as well. Here we go, got something else. This is the one that I mentioned before, Aphorensis. Now this is the one that wasn't on the chart, but it's the most famous because most po folks are gonna know it as Lucy. Ah, well that this is this is the big one. This is the big right? one. Lucy. This is forget it. Once once we Give see it this, it's over. But we have yep. to deal with it. So here we go. Uh, let's see. Afferences. Let's go to the next one here. Let's, let's, let, uh, watch, let's someone else talk about it. The yeah. great here Mr. The Attenborough. They found the link between apes and man. It offered conclusive proof that we started walking upright 3.2 million years ago. A human ancestor, a female, Lucy. Okay, man. A lot of claims made there, yeah. so lightning round. Here it goes. Let's deal with it. Wow. What are we going to do? We got really cool pictures, and please uh, notice the not detail. Even a, it's not even a picture. It looks like a great photograph, like someone touched that. I love the, the hands of this this one. He's he's worshiping. Look at him. He's <laughs> worshiping something, and this guy's rebellion, rebelling. But my favorite, my yep. favorite, is the look on that lady's face. Does oh, she love her husband she or sure what? Does. Look at her. That's a woman it's who loves her husband. And, Bub, yeah. if I had pecs like that, I would demand my wife look at me like that. <laughs> and look at this like, guy, though. Yeah, future Fortune 500 yeah, yeah. CEO. Look that, at his this, eyes. The oh, detail on his eyes, man. You pointed out a couple things yeah. here. His, Hands yeah. and eyes. What's the evidence to support the depictions that we have? This. There you go. Can't you see the eyes here? <laughs> <laughs> no fossilized eyeballs, trust me. And the hands. And Where no hands? hand bones, and by the way, no toe bones. The feet. Huh. So when we go to museums and we see Lucy walking upright with human hand, human feet, we're being lied to, quite frankly, yeah. because they didn't find any hand bones or any foot bones. But they, he just said it proved they walked upright 3.2 million years ago. They say the hip did that. Yeah. And boy, in this episode, we can't show you everything. Look, we teach a class. Juan and I teach a class at Faith Baptist Bible College. Check them out sometime, because uh, I do one class on 18 ancestors. Wow. Like, this is the old ancestors. Yeah. We do the, this is still one of the newer ones, but uh, we do the 18, and when we go through everything, three secular sources destroy every one of them. And what they had to do to turn Lucy's hips from chimp hips to human hips would blow your mind. Oh, yeah. That's blow the one I think mind. I saw where they had all the tools out, chiseling exactly, everything to make, to, dude, to make so. it work. But I got a, I got a question on this one, right? Yeah. How do we, and I, just this popped up, how do we know... If we find a bunch of bones that they all come from the same person, what if five people were in the in the hole? How do we know that goes with that? Yeah. I mean, I can kind of see those going. Right, how right. do we know certain things go with that? Depending everything? On, on how the placement is, you can know that these pieces go together, but then sometimes you really don't. Like even Lucy, for instance, Lucy, yeah. the one bone that you see that looks it's like a bird. Right here. Yeah, it looks yeah, like a little yeah. bee. They, it took 40 years, but they finally figured out that it doesn't it's, even belong it, to Lucy. It's that's what I always think when you're digging up stuff and you're I mean because these when you when you show up they aren't displayed like this. They place them all like this. Yes. Right? Sometimes you will find them. Oh, it's you will like just yeah. like that that yeah that but that put most together, of huh? the time no. And it's if someone else was next to you and and died at the same time then how do you how do you put them when, all together anyway? When you go to the museum you'll see uh, at Smithsonian at least you're going to see human hand and human foot bones on there but they did not find from the individual Lucy they found it from other specimens that they put it on Be there. Careful. But the, the curvature tricks. Of the finger and toe bones that they found that they stuck on there were actually more curved than a chimp. She did not have human hands. She did not have human feet. Wow. Period. Yeah, they're just... But look at the skull. Seven pieces of yeah, skull. So here we go here. And I, I, this is something I really love to point out to folks. Far left is a chimpanzee skull. Far right is a human skull. In the middle is Lucy. And it supposedly had both ape and human features because it's that common ancestor. I took the existing information. I didn't add anything to it, take anything away. And then I overlaid it on top of the chimp. Hmm. And then I overlaid it on top of the human. And which one does it actually fit better with? I'm going to go with this one. It is totally yeah, chimp. Yeah. You can see that uh, on this one, uh, the we bone, can, yeah. Yeah, we can wear it's glasses. Missing. Chimps can't wear glasses. Put glasses on, it's going to slide, off, slide right. off. But when they show this skull, they show it as a crossover in between apes and humans. Right. It is but totally it chimp. It fits just, just on the chimp. Totally one, chimp. Right? Yeah. Absolutely. But what's the bottom line with yep. it? Houston Museum of Natural Science got the bones, actual bones of Lucy for the first time ever, brought them out of Africa, put them on display. They made a study booklet for the teachers to use with the students that they were taking in there. I got a copy. Page 20 says this. For many years, Lucy was thought to be a direct human ancestor, but we now see her as belonging to a separate group of hominids from those which became our species, Homo sapien, which means Lucy is not in the human lineage. Yeah. 
This is from the study book that they made. And Lucy wasn't even on the chart. No. But Lucy was the big find way after the chart. She's the and then it doesn't fit at, all, fit at all either. She she no. doesn't belong on the on the on the human. And let me drive chart. that home. 150th anniversary of the publication of Origin Species, 200th anniversary of the birth of uh, Charles Darwin. Yep. They made this chart here. This is their chart, secular chart. This one. And this depicted the greatest, latest information on how ape-like ancestors evolved into humans. And remember what you learned in the fossil classes, yep. all right, that we did, right? The dark lines, solid lines mean? You got some evidence. The skinny lines mean? You don't know. You got, it's making up some stuff. <laughs> and and now the question even, marks mean I have no idea what's there. You got a lot of lines and question marks. This is Lucy, Australopithecus afarensis, straight line, straight line, not connected in with the ape lineage the human lineage anymore. It's gone. And by the way, we talked about Africanus. She's over there. Boom. No longer in the lineage as well. So the new missing link is right there, which is a skinny line and two question marks. Yeah. Well, that's convincing to me, as is the, the charts becoming less and less convincing. So these are their charts. <laughs> and we're going to keep these going, These are their man. charts. So next one, now we get into the big dogs because we have Australopithecus robustus, which, yeah. by the way, has been renamed. All right? But we'll get to that. He represents an evolutionary dead end in man's ancestry. Now, they put that right here. Yes. He's a dead end, but he's on the chart. And he's in the chart. Why? It's the same reason you have a coexist label yeah. with CO and two of the things that are in there are not religions. Don't yeah. you know, have nothing to do yeah. with it. But you need the goofy symbols to make the, the thing to work. To make it work, right? Yeah. It's and that's same. exactly what they did. They stuck something in there just to make it work. Yeah. Being honest, okay? This is the new name. I told you they renamed it. It's now called Paranthropus. What, what does that mean? It means beside near man. But Carl, that means that it could still be, right? It's mm. near, so it's close to man. Remember the chart. Let's go back to that chart. Here's the whole Paranthropus series. Right there. Near to man. Next it's to man. It's gone. Not it's on the man. Out of the lineage. lineage. Yep. So, no good. See ya. Uh, but here we are now. Homo erectus. Homo erectus is, according to what they say here, and I believe them, is first man of our own genus. Homo erectus is modern of limb, but more primitive of hand and brain. Now, here's a question. How Did do they know the brain it's, was primitive? Yeah. I mean, all they have is the skull, yeah. and you can know what the brain was like? Yeah, and sometimes they don't have the skull. They have the pelvis, right? We went through that. <laughs> we we so did that, right? We don't even know. With a cranial capacity extending only into the lower range of Homo sapiens. So it had a cranial capacity of a human, but it was on the lower end. So it's a human. Brain size doesn't determine right. intelligence. intelligence. Yeah. yeah. Remember that. Great. But it's human. Uh, oh, early Homo sapien. Um, there's three of them here. And by the way, when you go do the research on this, every one of those are now essentially classified as Neanderthal, yep. which we're going to come back to because it's a. It, I mean, so that's it, it. They're all these. Each one of these. They're is, human. In, they're human. They're Neanderthal. So, okay. Which we're going to get which to. Which is part human. Okay. So. But we got to get the human, not solo human. Yeah. man, which yeah. I'd never heard of, and it's not. It, it's come on. You no. put that in there. No. You can always <laughs> tell when Carl puts stuff in there. They just pop up on the slides with these kinds of things. So mm. see you, Han. Sorry. I love you, brother. But solo man, according to the chart, was an extinct race of Homo sapien in Java. Solo man is known so far only from two shin bones and some fragments of skull. Oh, my goodness, again. Bub, you fundamentalist hick. What's wrong with you? How in the world can you believe that evolution is not a fact? We have two shin bones and a fragment. Well, it's enough for me to give up on the word of God, <laughs> wouldn't you? I mean, it's like, why? Yeah, uh, re really interesting the not more we it. explore this, right? Not doing it's it. It's really, really interesting. But, you know, whenever it doesn't end. So now we're back to the Neanderthal we're, man. So now those other three that we talked about yeah. classified with the Neanderthal man. Not nearly as brutish a fellow <laughs> as his name has come to come. Fellow! A fellow, like they, they were all hung out with him and everything. He's I, that's a decent what I love. guy, yeah, you know, he's, he's a decent he's guy. A, he's, a nice, he's a nice kid. Um, and it goes on to say down here that had a cranial capacity in some cases larger than that of modern man. So we're devolving? <laughs> we're, we're getting bigger brains than we get than less we get smaller brains. brains. So, and we're supposed to be smarter than him, but brains equal intelligence. So he was smarter, but we... He didn't last. We, and, yeah, Think of how they always depicted Neanderthal man. I mean, this oh, is yeah. just well, a variety of depictions, yeah, here's right? Here's like a history of them. You know, the 1800s, the 19, yeah. early 1900s, mid-1900s. I remember this. I remember <laughs> that, yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, you look at him, and the one thing that you can say is this is a poor guy that he yeah. needs a dental yeah. plan. Yeah, but we got we got legit photography of these oh, guys, oh, right, yeah. from the well, discovery, right, I think. Remember, Adam, yep. he yep. had his GoPro. Always, and, always there with the GoPro. This is a guy that needed a dental plan. Yep. There's no argument about it. Now, one so thing. So real, so good. Look at it. Look. 
One thing, though, what really makes us know that he evolved from an ape? Look at those eyebrow ridges. The, I mean, the, it's the, so apparent. Yeah. Well, I'm going to put it to you like this. If you think big eyebrow ridges means you evolved from an ape, you tell this guy that because he's a seven-foot-tall professional boxer. Yeah. I'm not messing with the guy. Absolutely. But, well, you got a, you got a line of these guys, right? I am Look not messing with Who's these this? guys. You know this yeah, he was a professional okay. wrestler back in the 60s. So all we're seeing is different shapes of, of human beings human being. that have always kind of been human beings, and this is how they look. Some, I mean, that, yeah, Andre, Andre the Giant, the Giant right? brother. I mean, come your, on. Your, your dad was a wrestler. Did yeah. you know him? <laughs> I never got you to never meet him. Mean no, him? Okay. he came a little bit after but my But, I mean, it's, it's like... They're just, no one would say these people aren't human, right? That's just. They're human that have a certain feature. That's it. That's it. That's yep. it. And what does History Channel have to say about Neanderthal Man? A lot, I'm sure. Neanderthal seems so promising when it's first presented. It seems like it's going to be the answer. But on closer inspection, it starts to fall apart. Most importantly, the key fossils just seem to be too much like humans. Neanderthal, at best, is a man with some ape qualities. Okay, there's Neanderthal. We got to keep going. Let's there jump you go. in. What about this guy? What Last about Cro-Magnon one. Man? Cro-Magnon Man. When you look at it, only a cultural step away from modern man. Brain capacity, 1600 CC, yep. larger than the average, average modern human. And by the way, when you look at the artwork that they did, yep. when you look at the things that they sculpted, yep. I mean, some of this stuff, yeah. They were talented. It's kind I of mean, beautiful, this stuff. DNA shows North American Indians related to ancestral European people. So now the DNA shows that essentially. So all humans, <laughs> they're all, all human. Magnum, Neanderthal, we're all, we're all, we're all, that's the point, right? And that's the point we got to get to is and right. And watch this. this. Stuff. Here's what really bothered me, guys. I'm, I'm just being honest with you. This bothered me the most because that chart went out in droves. Yep. They didn't get the text. This is the book. They didn't get this part, so no, they got the thing. Yeah. They got the chart, yeah. but when you read the text, which is why, why do we tell you? Read the text. Please so read get the text. This is what it says. Although proto-apes and apes were a quadrupedal, walking on all fours, yep. all right, all are shown here standing for the purpose of comparison. So every one of those, every one of those, were they were they should be, they, apes. There should be like this guy. They should be like that guy. Every one of them. But it wouldn't have made the photo that good, and all it of a sudden there wouldn't have been a, a, a scent, right? Not a one of those so, is in the human lineage, so you get rid of all so of them. So what do you get? That's it. You get an ape line, and you get a human line. Right Every from one of where those are were. human. The rest are apes. But let's go back, and let's, we're going to finish with these quotes here, because this is, is just drilling home what we've been talking yep. about, all right? It is revealing, I'm sorry, it is a revealing story not only for the creatures it shows, but also because it graphically illustrates how much can be learned from how little. That's what we've been saying over and over. Every right? time. Yep. And many of the figures shown here have been built up from far few fragments of jaw, some teeth perhaps, as indicated by the white highlights, and thus are products of educated guessing. Which is how we started this whole thing off. When you see words and suggestions and all kinds of uh, interchangeable words for guessing, yes. it's something to look at. you got to always be paying attention. That's what we're here for. We're going to help you share this stuff, learn this stuff, get out there, and be bold for Christ because <laughs> if this is our only competition, come on. We got a whole lot better than that. See you next time. See Adios. You.